Hi friend, I hope you like this video and you will support it with a like. Subscribe to the channel because I plan to continue to do this manhwa. Of course if I see that you like it. Anyway, I wish you a pleasant viewing. In 2025 the Earth was invaded by extraterrestrial organisms, under the pressure of which people had to retreat, but in 2038 people were able to change everything. Thanks to a breakthrough in genetic engineering modified soldiers were able to push back the enemy. In 2050 people had the opportunity to have enough points to get injection, thanks to which you can awaken superpowers and it was at this point began the gene era. And here in 2137 the main character named Shu Tuei experienced a turning point in his life. He was on his way to the injection. On the way there he met holograms of heroes. The guy was well aware that the only way not to be at the bottom of society is to awaken superpowers. Every person from childhood goes through many lessons, and even to have a better body people were forced to undergo hellish training. And now after so many years of suffering, Shu Tui was standing at the terminus. Guy's phone suddenly rang. He immediately picked up the phone, and it was his mother, who was very worried about her son. Because when you wake up there is a chance in 1% that a person simply die. The hero explained that at the stage where he is now. He simply cannot give up. He reassured his mother that there was only a 1% chance of death. There was a sound from the speakers, a voice saying that it was time for the students who had arrived at the revival to go inside. The boy immediately headed inside, while saying goodbye to his mom. Inside the building everything was done to the highest standard. Many young people were already dreaming of the abilities they could get today. The hero realized that absolutely all the guys were in a positive mood. He headed to the door with a security guard, then introduced himself and said that he was heading for a wake-up call. The system started checking the guy's identity. Fingerprints. I shells. Shu seemed to be worried. He couldn't imagine what type of gene he would get. There was a good inhibitive type that increased physical strength, but an exceptional type with superpowers also beckoned to the guy. But also he prayed that he would not get a strange ability. He dreamed of awakening something ordinary, like X-ray vision. He already imagined how with the help of this ability he could see girls' underwear. At that time in the corridor in the company of friends, there was an argument. Some of them doubted whether it was worth it to ricochet. After all the chance of dying was about 1%. One of the friends reassured the guys. Because the chance of success is as much as 99%. The guy still could not gather their will in a fist. The brave guy was called to give him an inaction. Shu also hoped to successfully awaken the genes. Suddenly the guy reached the office. He took a breath. Which is logical. He had been waiting so long for this day. Then knocked on the door. But a moment later in the next room rumbled a huge explosion. Shu did not understand what had just happened and began to feel a little nervous. At that time, a group of friends with all legs ran away, and their friend covered with flames and burned to the ground. The team of the institution immediately began to extinguish the guy. Using a fire extinguisher they managed to extinguish the fire, but of the young man, there is almost nothing left. It was another student who could not withstand the inaction, and died from his own ability. The guy's friends were shocked and frightened, so they instantly dismissed the idea of waking up. At the same time, Shu was also frightened, because he could be the same fate. He was hesitant to go in, but his resolve was not easily broken and he went inside. All in the name of not becoming a scum, Sutz introduced himself and explained that he had come for an awakening. The girl told the student in a sweet voice to come in. The boy went inside and saw an incredibly charming girl who said that before the procedure she would have to ask a few questions. She told about the chance of death during the procedure and the hero was well aware of it and agreed to take responsibility for all the consequences on himself. The girl took the shvir and then asked if the guy was willing to take the risk to awaken his genes. Shu was a little hesitant, because just a few minutes ago he saw the death of one of the people. Shu said in a confident voice that he was sure of his choice, and then the nice girl said that the guy would take off his pants. It seemed that Shu did not understand why to do this, but the beauty explained that for the best effect of the injection is done in the femoral artery. After that the guy embarrassingly exposed his ass, and seeing the huge needle begged the girl to be gentler with him. After that, a soul-shattering scream came from the room. The girl said that the drug had been injected and had already spread throughout his body, and then asked you if he felt anything, but he felt absolutely nothing. Ten minutes passed, and from the girl's mouth sounded the same question, and the answer remained the same, which made the guy worried, because it is possible that you still cannot wake up. After thirty minutes, the girl was surprised that during the observation of the guy no changes were detected. She first encountered something like this, then asked Chu to stand up, and touched his shoulder. The hero was very sad that most likely he is destined to become garbage, but just a moment later his body was seized by a terrible pain. 
he began to fall parallel near screaming with unbearable pain. Chu did not understand what was happening, he felt as if his head was about to burst. He screamed in pain, at that time the girl came closer and was shocked. The pulse of the guy was off the scale, and his temperature rose to 50 degrees. At that time Xu seemed to have already accepted the fact that he was dying, but still in his eyes read pain and disappointment from this outcome of events. Xu was surrounded by darkness, which led him to think that he had died. But a moment later he saw a huge meditating image in front of him. It seems that the guy could not realize what it is, and why he was in this place. Looking closely at the hero came to the realization that in front of him a huge version of himself. He saw strange things around his image, and suddenly his body was pierced by a current, and Shu instantly woke up. The girl noted that the student regained consciousness after the first discharge. The hero asked what happened, while the girl told the guy that his body awakened as many as 14 hidden genomes. Shu was overjoyed, because he received as many as 14 and not ordinary genomes. The girl instantly crushed the guy's hopes by telling him that all of them belonged to the erudition class. She held out the last form. At that time, the hero couldn't believe that all 14 talents were erudition. He didn't want to work as an ordinary office worker. The girl said that if the guy still had questions, he could easily read everything in her report. Shu asked about his powers, and she explained that it wouldn't be long before he knew if he had any. Shu seemed to be ready for such an answer, so the girl took out her business card and told him to contact her in case of any problems. The guy began to scrutinize the card. His surprise was not limited because the young and beautiful girl next to her was already a professor. He could not even imagine that there are such young professors. Xu said goodbye to the girl, and was about to leave, as soon as he went to the door to leave the room. Behind his back sounded the girl's voice. He asked what exactly she wanted to say. She decided to pre-read Vidyu Gai that he would not be caught in the eyes of the Redemption of Dawn. Xu didn't seem to understand anything, but he had heard of such an organization. It was a group of people who betrayed humanity and joined the ranks of the invaders. It was because of this group that humanity had suffered huge losses in the past 100 years. The girl said that they often steal people for experiments, and about five students had already been kidnapped. Xu thanked the beautiful girl for her advice. After a while, Xu walked down the street and thought about what skill he had. The guy began to remember the image that he saw after losing consciousness, but thinking was stopped by a pain in the head. The hero was approached by an unknown guy. It turned out that it was Chen Mo and Tang Ting. They were the hero's classmates. Tang Ting asked how many genes Xu had awakened. It turned out that Chen awakened 11 genes, but they were all in the stomach. The guy was crying, because he really has the potential to become a fat king. A friend was supporting the guy, or rather teasing him about becoming the first ever transmutant glutton. The guy was furious at such a joke, and took his own on a painful tack. He asked how many genes Xu had awakened. He admitted that he had managed to awaken 14 secret genes. The friend seemed shocked by such information. The guys could not believe it, because in their city, few people were able to awaken 10 genes, and Shu as many as 14. The hero decided to bombard his friends with words about having a class erudition. The guys were shocked doubly. It turned out that such a class is incredibly difficult to develop, and it is difficult to find a robot. The friend told about his relative, who had to change seven jobs, after which he became a monk. Such prospects very upset the hero. The guy was upset with his class, also because he had a hidden type. He could not even imagine what abilities he had. The guy decided to contact a university professor to get help. A classmate suggested going out for a snack, explaining that thinking too much was bad for him. Shu told him that he had a headache, and for that reason he refused the offer. The guy seemed worried about the protagonist. After a while, Shu was walking down a noisy street, where there was a lot of noise and news on every corner. The guy walked without expressing any emotions, but he was incredibly worried about the pain in his head. They literally drove him crazy. Suddenly the guy had an epiphany. It seemed like he could feel the ability. It was as if his perception had improved many times over. He could feel everything around him. He could sense what people were doing behind the walls, even the location and number of things. Even through several walls he could sense people, and even small objects. Shu decided to try one more time. The guy realized that this was his limit now. Shu decided to head home, and continue there. Suddenly he had a very strange feeling, as if every cell of his body was trying to tell him something. At that time, behind his back, behind the wall hid a man who was very closely following Shu. The hero was followed by a group of people. The guy felt it very well and tried to be on the lookout. Shu assumed that the mysterious pursuers were people from the Dawn Redemption organization. Shu pondered over the Tem how to act. To call the police is a stupid decision. If he makes a mistake now, 
he will suffer, or even die. Suddenly the hero came to the epiphany, because recently the professor gave him a business card. The hero decided to call her and spend the night at the police station, until the situation with the persecution is not settled. At that time in the building of the city hall Jincheng, held a meeting at which the commander of the officers of the city hall, he demanded a report on all students, as well as warned that anyone who disobeys this order will be punished. Suddenly the professor's phone rang, which surprised her. She apologized and asked if she could interrupt him. She told about Shui and his current situation. The commander asked a question to his employee, and he instantly began to review some information. This person told the professor that next to the hero there are proven people and there is nothing to worry about. The girl asked why to send three people for one student. The guy started to tell about the Janil plan, but after a moment he realized that they sent only two people. The girl instantly suggested that they should start taking action. She asked if the guys would send someone or if she should go herself. The guy said that two people would be enough to protect the student. The girl was beyond angry. How dare they risk the student's life? The precursor said that the guy was the perfect bait, since he had a useless class and had as many as 14 hidden genes. The girl was just furious about such a decision. At that time the head intervened and said that it was his personal order. He said that he did it in order to catch the members of the organization and in the future to protect the students. The girl tried to prove that it was a dangerous idea, because at any moment something could go wrong. The head explained that even if the bait died the plan would be fulfilled, and it was all taken into account. The girl listening to all this nonsense began to chicken out. She realized that it was useless to explain something and hurried to get away from this event. The head was furious at the girl's behavior. One of the guys tried to stop the girl, threatening that because of her actions she could go to court. The girl said she wouldn't do anything, but definitely warned Shuya about what was going on here. The head accepted that the girl would tell everything to the student, but also added that she would in no way reveal the plan. The guy reminded the girl that the student should not know about the plan. At that time, the hero finally received an answer, which was extremely happy. Shu realized that the two agents were guarding him while the third stalker was the enemy. Shu began to think about why they do nothing if they know that he is in danger. The only option that came to his mind was right. He was just a decoy. The hero decided to pretend as if he did not notice anything, and went to a place. The girl brought the young man and asked him what he wanted. The hero stood in place and thought about what to order. The girl asked if the guy had chosen something and Shu asked for one cup of tea, after which the girl handed a cup of tea to the hero, and he left the establishment, where the very strange man was waiting for him. Shu continued to walk in an unknown direction, and the strange man followed him on his heels. The hero could not contain his emotions. He grabbed the cup, then sharply developed, and splashed boiling water straight into the face of his enemy. The man didn't seem to expect his pursuit to be noticed, and didn't have time to react to such a surprise. The enemy was out of anger. He immediately went to attack the hero, saying that if it is impossible to take alive, it is worth taking dead. Shu was in a dangerous situation, because he did not have any fighting skills. The enemy kicked directly at the body of the hero, from which he flew off and slammed into the window. Shu assumed that the enemy's genes were centered in his legs, and he had a lot of strength. Shu started shouting that the guy was a member of the Dawn Redemption Organization, and told the Secret Service agents to arrest him. As soon as the common people heard this they started to run away with all their might, as they were very scared. At that time the agents were amazed that the kid had discovered them, and looking closely they saw the enemy. The enemy mocked the agent saying that two of them would not be enough to fight him. Between the guys began a battle. Many blows flew in both sides. Shu was shocked by the ability of the enemy. He single-handedly cramped the two agents. The enemy struck a serious blow directly on the face of one of the agents. Shu began to think about a way to help the agents because if this continues they all end. Suddenly, the hero again began to have headaches. His body began to hurt very badly. The guy was incredibly annoyed that he cannot help anyone, because he is a regular polymath. Shu found himself back in the place where his image was. Now he clearly realized that all these dots were his genes. While the gray dots in the hero's body were genes that had not yet been awakened, the guy was shocked, because now he could see the structure of his body. He assumed that this was his ability. He perfectly saw the flow of energy in his body. The guy decided to immediately try to take control of it, and it all bore fruit and there was a result. Shu decided to use energy to open the block point. He does not have time to train for a long time, or take expensive drugs. That's why he forcibly used energy to open the point, and he succeeded. At that time, in reality, the tough enemy missed a blow from the agent, right in his stomach. There was no look of despair on his face. It was as if he was just playing around. 
he delivered a crushing blow with his foot, and the two agents were defeated in the blink of an eye. The enemy decided to finish off Shu, he approached Anne with the words that no one could save the guy, began to reach out his hand. Suddenly, Shu opened his eyes, which surprised the enemy, and the hero immediately attacked the stomach of the enemy, from which he coughed blood and flew a decent distance, and then slammed into the wall, leaving a large trace. The agents watching the blow were amazed at the strength of an ordinary student, while the enemy couldn't move his arms, and the agents took advantage of the situation to quickly twist the enemy. At that time, the girl at the meeting was visibly worried about the hero, because he still has not written to her. Although a lot of time has passed, suddenly the guy received a phone call. Hearing the information he was just shocked, the commander was interested in what happened. He began to talk about Shuya, and without letting him finish the commander yelled at the guy, saying that his people are incompetent, but he explained that the student not only did not suffer but also contributed to the victory over the enemy. It turns out that the townspeople know that it was a man from the organization. Now the plan to catch them all was definitely failed, because now they will not stick out. The commander asked who told the information to the student. Looking directly into the girl's eyes, she offered to check her communication devices right away. She was shocked that Shu could think of such a thing on his own. The commander seemed to be out of anger. He ordered his man to investigate immediately, and said he was expecting a report soon. At that time in the Secret Service building, a group of people were moving along the corridor. It turns out that the attacker had a rank E, while the others only had ranks. The guys were thinking about how the student was able to strike that blow. Seeing the hero they were a little shocked. It turns out that he immediately said that he was hungry, and then began to devour a huge amount of food. The guy realized that such an awakening point causes not only pain, but physical suffering. The hero also realized that under no torture he could not reveal the possibilities of his ability. Shu began to tell a plausible story about how he realized that the enemy was a member of the organization. The investigator said that he was ashamed of the agents who could do nothing at such a moment. The guy looked at the hero and realized that he definitely had potential. Shu thanked him for the compliment and asked when he would be allowed to go home. The guy asked Chu to sign a non-disclosure contract and promise 6 points and 50,000 in cash as a reward. Chu was happy to be given most of the reward. The guy said that Chu's victory was amazing. While the protagonist asked if he would continue to be used as a decoy, the investigator didn't seem to have expected such a thing, and said that even though the students with more genes were assigned security guards, they were all captured. In the end, the investigator said that he had said too much and went about his business. A little later. She was on the phone with the professor, he had already applied to her university. He also said that he would continue to be used as bait to keep gifted students away. The girl confirmed the words of the guy. Shu was nervous, because if his opponent took him seriously he would not have a chance. Now the hero was determined to become much stronger, because in front of him awaits a very hard work. At that time, inside the hall of the secret service, a huge number of unknown symbols appeared on the monitor screen. Three days had passed since that incident. And at the boy's house, his mom was happy that a letter from the university had arrived. Shu did not look very good, it seemed that he was very thin. The guy started eating lunch. He ate very furiously while his parents couldn't believe what they were seeing. Shu opened another point, which caused his body to become exhausted and so overloaded that he lost consciousness. But the worst part for the guy was that the effect was nil. Shu was determined to get a lot of information at the university and definitely become stronger. His father began to teach the hero that he would not engage in obscenities at night so often, because the body is then exhausted. The guy tried to justify himself, because he did not do anything like that. His father held out a box. He said it was a gift from his mom. It turned out that inside the box were energy capsules. The boy seemed to be shocked. After all, these were ranky energy capsules. Most ordinary people couldn't afford a capsule. The guy couldn't accept such a valuable gift, but his parents weren't going to take it for themselves. It turned out that his parents were saving up money despite their low salaries. Such behavior really touched Shu Ya. A little later it was night outside. Shu inside his room began to meditate. He immersed himself, and then again found himself near his huge image. The guy started to look at the image carefully. Then he started to manipulate the energy. The guy concentrated too much energy and it felt like his leg was going to explode. He started to distribute the energy and finally another point was opened. He ended up being thrown out of that space. Now he finally managed to awaken two gene points, but his body started to hurt a lot. The capsule only restores energy, but not the body. The guy decided to start training his mind. After a while he heard his mother's voice, and then he instantly jumped up from the bed. From surprise and great force he hit his head on the ceiling and fell down. 
attracting the attention of his parents. The boy said he was all right, and was glad that his leg strength had been increased. The parents ran into the guy's room, as they were very worried about their son, but the picture they saw shocked them. The guy's body was incredibly beautiful and pumped up, which made the parents scrutinize every muscle. Shu began to look at his pumped up body, and was surprised. Although he managed to open the genes in the leg and brain, he was surprised to get a lot of strength in his hand. He decided to test the strength of his fingers, then took a card and threw it directly into the jar, which flew off with tremendous force. Fingers of the hero also became much stronger. It remains only to train to use the received power. However, now he could not even throw evenly. The technique apparently lacked. Then Shu paid attention to a plate of soybeans, and he came up with a brilliant idea. He took one soybean in his hands and prepared to launch it. A moment later the guy sent a soybean in flight, and that at an incredible speed pierced the can through, as if it was shot with a firearm. Shu was shocked by this outcome, because if instead of a rice bin to take a metal ball, it becomes a very murderous weapon. The hero was pleased with himself, because now if he suddenly gets into trouble again, he will at least be able to stand up for himself. After a while, a huge number of people gathered. It was just ordinary people who saw off the students who had awakened the ability. At that time, the parents of the hero was very worried about the guy, and said that if he suddenly needs something that he would immediately turn. At that time intervened a friend who said that she should not worry, because he will definitely look after Shu. The friend asked where Sailor was, because he should be here by now. But Shu said that the guy had gone to another university and he wouldn't be here. The guy began to resent that he was not warned. Hero said that it was the desire of their friend, and his university is not so bad, but after it will have to join the defense forces. The friend was worried about the guy, because in such units about 20% of people die. Shu explained that their friend was talented, so he should not worry about him and then the announcement was made that the students should take their seats. There were only 10 minutes left. Shu said goodbye to his parents and then headed to the airplane. His friend was very happy that they had become students, and intended to date the first beauty of the university, because before he could not think of such a thing. When he was studying and training for days on end, some arrogant type got into the conversation, and began to say that a man with genes in his stomach, and should not dream about the first beauty as well as joked about the fact that no restaurant will not serve such a blue. After that, everyone around began to discuss the glutton, and literally laugh at him. Shu did not tolerate this and approached the instigator of this conflict. He ordered the bastard to shut his mouth if he did not know how to use it properly. The bastard started to say that there was nothing wrong with telling the truth, and they got into an altercation. It almost came to a fight, but the staff intervened and said that the guys needed to settle things outside, not in here. The friend tried to calm Shu Ya because the teacher had already come. Shu finally gave advice to the bastard that he should keep his mouth shut, otherwise he would risk his life. The teacher started yelling at the guys to stop bullshitting, then he introduced himself. His name is Cha Ethan, and he is their teacher. He also said that anyone who caused trouble he would teach them a lesson. Looking towards Shu Ya, the friend asked Shu to calm down, because he should know the guy who was sitting next to the bastard. It was a real machine that had awakened 16 genes during a single test. Shu thought about it. After all, this was the guy the principal had told him about. There was also a girl named Gongling who had good talent and heavenly beauty. The friend seemed to be crazy about this girl, and Shu felt ashamed of his friend. After a moment, the girl walked inside. She caused quite a stir with her appearance, for she was incredibly beautiful. She introduced herself, and said that she was the professor of the faculty of erudition, and would be their escort. Shu was a little surprised that professor and also got into this car. A huge number of similar cars were going everywhere right now. At that time, inside the escorting mobile command center, the general began to report that all signals had been disabled except for the military communication channel. The man reported that the registration season is very dangerous, because many bad people make their move during this period. Usually the enemies ambush them in the middle of the road. That's why they need to choose a route as soon as possible. At that time, the general said that the number three car is the highest priority and that he relies on the guys. At that time, Shu thought about bad things, because he was in the car in which people with the largest number of genes. Shu noticed that they were moving in a slightly altered route and assumed that it was to confuse the enemies. The guy's attention was attracted by the nature outside the window of the transport. It was strange. He wondered how long there had been no human feet here, and decided that someday he would visit this area. An announcement was made all over the car. Namely that in 30 minutes they would reach the first supply point. He told them that they would have only 3 minutes, and ordered them not to approach the Setina, 
because if they did, the soldiers would instantly kill the intruder. After 30 minutes, they arrived at the supply point. There were ships flying all over the place and cars inside. The hero friend was shocked by this sight and said that it was scary. At that time Shu seemed to be struck by something, and it was when he saw the number of troops inside that he realized that this place was not safe at all. A little while later, everyone was asked to head towards the cars. While everyone ran to the car, Shu thought about the fact that at the base even to go to the toilet. Suddenly the guy heard a noise that attracted his attention. Turning around he realized that the noise came from one stall. Shu did not understand what the person behind the door does. They need to go to the car in a short time. Shu did not think long before using his skill, thanks to which he began to look at what is happening behind the door. And there was a teacher who instantly reacted to the peeping. But as soon as he came out of the toilet with rage, there was no one. Shu didn't understand what the teacher could be doing in secret from everyone. After a while, the hero explained to the warriors what he saw, but they did not seem to understand what is so. The hero tried to explain that the teacher put some object in his mouth, but the warriors after this began to laugh at the top of his voice. After they calmed down asked Chu to explain why he was peeping at the teacher, but their dialogue was interrupted by the announcement that the guys have 30 seconds left. Chu began to run to the car, and the military advised him to watch fewer movies. The car had already started to pull out, and everyone was asked to take their seats. The teacher began to scold the hero for being late and advised him to stay in this place if he liked it so much. Shu asked what the teacher had eaten, which caused him to react violently and asked what the guy was talking about. Shu got out of it very easily, like he wanted to know if there was a canteen at the base. Once inside, he apologized to everyone for keeping them waiting. Shu was well aware that the teacher was hiding something very carefully. A little while later, a huge convoy of cars was driving down the road. The friend asked if the hero was hungry, because he had some food left. At that time the teacher looked very fiercely at Shuya. The hero remembered an interesting fact, namely that the teacher has two strange dentures. He considered telling the soldiers, but also assumed that they may be at the same time. So he chose to remain silent. Suddenly Shu realized that he had someone he could tell everything to. After that he went to the professor. He asked him if he could sit next to her. She asked in a rude manner what he wanted. He said that he wanted to ask a few questions about the hidden type. After that the girl allowed him to sit next to her, and the guy thanked her. The teacher watched, and the others were shocked that their goddess allowed the guy to sit next to her. The girl told Shu to say what he wanted, and he in turn held out his phone and asked the girl to look at it. On the phone was the information that Shu had managed to get, namely that the teacher had installed two prostheses that rubbed against each other. The girl seemed to understand something after reading the information, and then instantly went to the teacher and asked him to show her his mouth. The man pretended that he didn't understand what and wanted from him, but the girl had no intention to play games and with her ability made the man fly up. He became pinned to the ceiling and was frightened, and she asked what the teacher was doing. After the girl let go of the man, he fell to the floor with a thud. The military intervened in the conflict and pointed their weapons at the girl, but she simply ordered them to sit down, emitting an incredibly creepy aura. The military men couldn't do anything about such pressure they had no choice but to comply. The man started shouting that the girl would be sorry for what she was doing, then and asked Chuya to check the prosthetics. The guy immediately went to the man and ordered him to open his mouth, then took out the strange prosthetics and showed them to the girl. As soon as she looked at the prosthetics she was shocked as they were sensors that bypassed the defenses and transmitted information. She asked the man who he was leaking the information to, but he started laughing out loud saying that he had never imagined he would be caught. Then he began to threaten that it was too late and no one could escape from this mess. At that time the headquarters were already calm, as they were near the flat where they would not be attacked. But suddenly a man came and reported that car number 3 suddenly went off course. And then a second man reported that car number 3 asked for direct communication with the commander. The girl told the commander that they had managed to catch a spy, and they had changed their route, as their previous one had been uncovered. She also called it a trap and said they had to get out. The commander ordered everyone to go to car number 3 and reroute. All the transports rerouted, while the commander asked for air support. Suddenly something strange started to appear on the monitors and it was flying right at them. It seemed to be some kind of shells that were precisely aimed at the vehicles. The commander gave the order that the vehicles would make a maneuver, but suddenly on his face froze horror. The shell hit directly on the vehicles, from which they flew apart. The commander realized that the enemy had high-precision weapons. So he ordered the vehicles to hold the defense, at that time and told the students that they had an emergency situation and ordered them to dismantle the seats as they knew from the manual. People started to take the seats apart, 
At that time Xu started to realize a little that the situation was not exactly as they were shown on TV. The organization was much stronger than they thought. The disciples started to get out of the car, covered by the shields from the seats. At that time, a fierce battle was taking place on the battlefield, with the commander giving orders in the front lines. A heavy firefight ensued between the two sides, and once the fire covered the entire sky, it seemed to be over. But a moment later a squad of men emerged from the clouds and headed for the assault. The military tried to keep them at a distance by shooting at them with automatic rifles. Some of the enemies managed to knock them down, and they began to fall straight down. Xu on the other hand was shocked to see that there were undercover soldiers among them and not students. The government was really well prepared. The battlefield was bursting with explosions and gunshots. A subordinate reported to the commander that the reinforcements would arrive in exactly three minutes. At that time it started suddenly. The ground began to shake as if in an earthquake. The commander was able to shout that the attack would come from under the ground, but only the strongest could react. The rest were hit by the attack and were pierced through by spikes from under the ground. The students were very scared after what they saw. At that time, Xu suggested that their enemy could control the earth, and the girl said that he was most likely a B rank. At that time, the military noticed the enemy. There were two men on the other side. One of them was just standing and watching while the other was buried in the ground. The military immediately opened fire. But here's the problem. The second man used his blade to deflect all the bullets. The second man said that all military men are weak, and today they will all die. After these words, the car on which the soldiers were riding flew into the air from the spikes that pierced it through. Suddenly, the ground began to fail. The military realized that the enemy's target was the car with the students, while the commander reacted instantly and headed towards the battlefield at an incredible speed. The enemy prepared to attack the old man with his sword, but the commander himself was determined to kill his enemies. He struck a deadly blow and not only broke the enemy's sword, but also ripped through it. After that, there was a huge explosion that knocked back the second enemy. Losing his partner he called him trash, after which he summoned the other members of the organization with orders to buy him time. At that time help arrived on the battlefield. Students were helping other students to get out from under the rubble. While the commander was using an invisible field to deflect the bullets flying at him and cut his enemies like insects, the enemy seemed to be very frightened. While the hero and his friend were amazed at the power of the ultimate type, suddenly from the forest heard an eerie sound. The girl said that most likely it is mutants, which are now going to gather at the sound of battle. At that time, a crowd of monsters began to come out of the forest, which were waiting to spill human blood. The soldiers began to use heavy weapons, but the enemies even under the explosions burst forward. One of the monsters finally broke through the defense of the people, after which the rest of the monsters also pounced on the people and began to tear them to pieces. At that time, Zutz was alarmed as their last line of defense was almost completely destroyed. At that time the man started gloating. The girl turned around and seeing this filthy traitor couldn't help herself and stepping on his stupid head ordered him to shut up. The girl calmed down the students and said that they should not worry because there are other teachers in this place besides her. All the teachers became a wall to protect the students from the demons. The girl warned the other teachers that they were the last line of defense. At that time, the huge monsters continued to rage. One of them was ready to kill the military, but in time intervened teacher who thanks to his strength destroyed the enemy. Other teachers also did not sit still, and fought with the monsters. The commander ordered the soldiers to go to the third car, but and said that all the soldiers already know it. So in this situation, it is useless to command. Xu could not contain his curiosity. He was very curious to know what abilities and had. At the time the girl materialized metal balls. At the same moment she was attacked by several demons. But for her it was not a problem. As she after a moment she tore them to pieces. Such a move shocked the guys, while the girl was ready for the next attack. One of the demons grabbed the student, and was ready to kill him, and instantly reacted and attacked, which in the end only frightened the beast, and he dodged. The girl decided to deal with this monster, and a moment later continued the volley of attacks. The monster didn't realize where their support units were. Suddenly a strange thing came from the forest. The girl was able to react in time and put a bearer. This attack was not easy for her, but she blocked it. The enemy continued his volley of attacks, and the girl had to go into full defense. While the monster whistled, smirking, the teacher seemed to realize what was about to happen. There were strange creatures hovering in the sky, but they were getting closer with each passing moment. The students and the military raised their shields above their heads to repel the enemy attack from the air, but the beasts that were on land also did not stand still and continued their fierce attack. It seemed that the teachers could not cope with such an onslaught of monsters. One of them was simply thrown aside. 
while there were already a huge number of enemies near the students, should try to take command and ask the guys to repeat after him. Suddenly one of the wolves pounced on the student, who screamed for help. The hero saw this picture and realized that he did not have time to run. That's why he decided to use the jelly ball. At that time the girl had already said goodbye to her life, but suddenly the body of the wolf was pierced through the iron ball. One of the monsters noticed what happened. He seemed incredibly angry, then headed towards the hero to take revenge. The enemy was very close, ready to tear Shio into pieces, but a friend intervened, who covered him with a shield. But because of the difference in strength, the shield shattered into small pieces, and the guy flew away with great force, and left a large imprint in the wall. The monster laughed at the fact that people are so weak, while the hero prepared the next iron ball, then attacked with all his might. He hit the monster in the forehead, but the fight did not end there. The enemy stood up in a stand, his forehead reddened from the hit, but it was Tuncho not fatal wound. Shu realized that at this rate he was finished, so he decided to change his tactics. While the enemy decided not to give the guy time to prepare the next attack and pounced on him, suddenly from the ground began to appear sprouts that enveloped the body of the enemy, which slowed him down a bit. It turned out that it was a girl who was saved by the hero, after the guy again shot the ball, but it did not hit the target, at which the beast laughed. Shu hoped that he would get the idea, but it turned out that he was not aiming at the beast. The enemy noticed it but it was too late. One of the snipers was eliminated. At the time all noticed that the shot stopped. The monster ordered people to continue firing, because they cannot that the girl entered the battle, but it was too late. The beauty has already prepared a counterattack and attacked the enemies. The enemies did not have time to recover, but a moment later they were blown away. The monster was furious. He was determined to destroy the hero. The enemy was one step away from blowing Shio's head, but the monster's head was pierced by a metal ball. Right through, it died instantly. Other monsters began to scatter in terror, but the girl was already preparing her terrible attack, after which most of the enemies were defeated by a clear shot of balls. The enemies began to retreat, because now the preponderance was on the side of the people. The commander rejoiced, because finally the subcrip arrived. At that time one of the enemies was in a rage. He blamed his men for everything. The commander went to attack to kill the enemy, but in front of him stood other people trying to protect the man. They used their bodies as explosives, causing a massive explosion in the area. While Ol was exhausted, causing her to fall to the ground, Shu could not stand still, then instantly moved to the girl and caught her. He held the beauty in his arms and was glad that he was in time. The girl on the other hand seemed to be unconscious. At that time on the battlefield of the commander happened unpleasant. The enemy was able to take cover taking advantage of the moment after the explosion. The commander ordered not to pursue the enemy, and better help the students. He could not imagine such an outcome. He piously believed that all will be well, but in reality, everything was just terrible. Some time later, the robot healed a man who was a friend of the hero who had been injured in the battle. Shu was glad that the friend had recovered, and he immediately jumped up. He was worried that they had run away, but the hero reassured his friend by saying that they had won the battle. The friend was glad that he did not die a virgin. Friend was lucky to survive, because only a few minutes were killed 15 soldiers and for students. The guy could not understand how the girl entered the battle, because she was restrained by snipers. Shu modest and said that thanks to willpower Ul managed to free himself and help with the monsters. Suddenly, that cute student came over and said that teacher and was calling for a hero. At that time in the ward, the girl was lying on the bed and seemed to be thinking about something. The girl and the hero came into the room and decided to ask if the hero was the one who caught her. He confessed that he was, and said that he couldn't control his body. The girl asked if the guy had cleaned up the blood on her body. She was very embarrassed and said he would never dare, and the student confessed that she had cleaned up the blood. On said she needed to talk to the commander, and asked Shu to take her. The guy went to the girl and tried to help her stand up. Suddenly came the voice of a student who offered to help, and the guy decided to give the role of escort to her. At that time in the headquarters were torturing the traitor, who looked like a complete mosaicist. They tried to get some information from him, but he did not give it out. The commander saw the girl and asked if she was better. She said she felt better and asked if there were any results in the interrogation. The commander said that the guy was well prepared, as he did not say anything under any torture or drugs. The commander said that this bastard should be brought to court martial. Also the commander said that the chips that were in the prosthetics were turned off and now they have virtually no evidence against this man. The students couldn't understand how this happened. They were all witnesses to the incident. At the time the man was overjoyed that he wouldn't be punished and threatened to take revenge. Shu could not understand whether in this situation there is no other way out. 
The girl asked if they are guided by the rules of wartime. The commander confirmed. The girl said that in order to prevent the next attack she needed to intensify the interrogation of the spy. Right now. The commander agreed with the girl's opinion and said they would do so. The man started yelling that he wanted a lawyer and that he would complain, but as soon as the girl approached he started begging for mercy and saying that he would tell everything. The girl said that she was sure that all the information had been erased the moment the man was captured. That's why he seemed useless to her, and she started to break his body using her ability. At the end she told him what she hated most of all the traitors. The man started to die, but at the last moment the commander intervened and killed the traitor with a blow of his blade. He asked the girl not to take on such a burden, and he in turn had already taken many lives. The commander ordered to record that the interrogation lasted five minutes, and the enemy spy died of blood loss. The subordinate obediently began to write down everything the commander asked. The commander noticed the hero, and clarified whether he was Shu. The commander thanked the hero and called him very capable, but he only said that it was his duty. After a while, the three were walking down the street, and the student asked why the traitor was not shot on the spot. She explained that sometimes bad people know the law better than they do. The girl asked if the guys know why the commander called her. It turns out because she is from another camp, and as soon as she appears in the reports, the higher-ups will close the case. She assumed that the enemies had foreseen this option in advance. The girl told the guys that in the future they are waiting for a lot of lies, deceit and cruelty. That is the world in which they live. She also said that at a time like this, the most important skill for them is the ability to defend themselves. After a while the column of cars was moving on the road again. The girl said that if they were originally accompanied by air forces they would not have been attacked. And the hero said that they were only now freed. The hero's friend called yesterday's type who ruled the earth a devil. For he had almost single-handedly destroyed their convoy and explained that he was really strong and that their plan was well thought out so that they would not have time to do anything. The teacher said that the girl and she was very lucky, because if there were no plants she would not have been able to contain the monster. The guys understood this very well, and they also asked what Rankin was. She said that she was C rank. She was shocked that C rank could be professors. She explained that having special abilities could make an exception. The student was delighted and wondered what special gift and had. She advised that in the future they should never tell others about their abilities. This simple thing would help them to keep their lives longer. She asked the students to never forget this wisdom, and they all thanked her for her guidance. Shu asked if they would be obliged to disclose their abilities upon enrollment. She said that there should be no problem, because such data is very carefully guarded. But the hero realized one very simple thing that there are exceptions. After a moment they finally arrived at their destination. They seemed to be in the Kyoto, which looked just great. The guys were shocked to see a flying skateboard that cost a million. At the time, the bastard responded to this childish sincerity with ridicule, and called the guys rednecks. At the time, the student was just as enraptured by this city. It was really very beautiful. At that time, the friend recalled that the girl did not leave the hero for a second. He assumed that she liked you very much, and then the hero's face became embarrassed. The girl asked what the guys were talking about, and the friend pretended it was nothing. The students were told to take their things and leave the cars. They also said to divide into groups of two and come to the registration desk. Tomorrow morning there will be an entrance test. The hero's friend was very worried, because in such a state it will be difficult for him to take the test. But the hero suggested that there should be options for such cases. The hero friend was met and told that he was exempted from the events. It turns out that he would be treated for free. It seemed that he won the lottery when he was injured in the attack. The friend was incredibly happy to be surrounded by sweet sisters. At the time, the student couldn't understand why the guy was so happy, and Shu explained to her that he would eat for free for half a month. Some time later, Shu finally arrived in his room. He was very tired because for such a short period of time a lot of events had happened. The guy realized that he needed to start training as soon as possible, because in the recent battle he managed to survive only by a miracle. He also realized that progress would be very expensive. He realized that if he did well on the exam he would be provided with good capsules. He realized that buying capsules was not an option, because he didn't have that kind of money. Now he had only two problems, money and supplements. Shu realized that he needed at least 20 gene points to obtain rank C. He decided to break through the night to solve future problems. The hero headed to his space again. After he finished he passed out right in the middle of the room. A moment later he woke up, and was terrified as it was already morning. There was someone knocking on his door, and it turned out to be the cute teacher on. He entered the room and asked the boy to close the door. Shu asked why the teacher came to him. She asked not to look in her direction. While the guy at that moment dreamed of getting dressed, 
Then the girl put on the table a leaflet with words, and asked the guy to read what is written there. The guy started to read the text of the leaflet, then the girl stopped him and asked him to put on his pants. Chu was angry because the girl had broken into his room and now she was giving orders. The door to the room was opened by a senior student, who was responsible for the younger students, but he saw an interesting picture of teacher and, and put on pants Shu. After that the senior immediately left the room. The guy tried to talk to the teacher, but she went to Delva and asked how many base points opened the hero. Shu confessed that he had opened 20 points, and asked if he had any chance of obtaining the rank. The girl said that if the guy shows himself, he can definitely do it, but she came here for another reason. She very strongly advised the guy during testing not to show his full strength. She couldn't understand why he shouldn't show all his power at the exam. The girl asked how exactly the hero can use his telepathy, and he suggested that now it's not suitable for a sniper, and the only option left is tracking. The girl said that there are intrigues going on everywhere, and they will definitely want to involve the guy. The girl of course gave advice, but also said that the guy is free not to listen to her. The hero decided to do as advised by the girl, and asked how much power to hide. She advised to hide half of the forces. The girl also told him that the hero had joined her faculty, so he was automatically her student. The girl was glad that the guy was satisfied with everything and hurriedly held out the document for Shu to sign. Shu was a little hesitant. He really hoped that the document was not some kind of labor slavery. Looking closely, the guy read the inscription that the document is a detailed report. The guy decided to familiarize himself with the information inside the document, where he learned that the report said that he was the one who defeated the monster with his power. The guy asked the teacher to explain, because it was she who was the one who killed the enemy. She explained that the merit of the guy in this battle was greater, so that's why it was written, and the hero will be rewarded. Chu was pleased with this outcome, and also surprised that the girl sacrificed glory, and gave all the laurels to him. The girl said that the guy has to go with his senior to take the test, and Shu did not realize how long to wait, but it turns out the so-called senior stood behind the door and eavesdropping. Suddenly the door opened and from there began to see a woman's leg. The guy began to pretend that he was just standing next to, and could not hear about what was inside. He nervously turned around, hoping the girl wouldn't notice anything. At that time, Shu left the room and told the senior that he was ready to go. The guy immediately began to ask the protagonist how he was so successful that he could spend the night with the queen of their faculty. Shu tried to explain the situation saying that the girl came on business, but the senior could not believe it, thinking that Shu just modest. When asked about the fact that they were only two, Shu told about a friend who is now in the hospital. The older man was on fire, thinking that Shu had hurt his friend and sent him to the hospital to meet a beautiful woman. Shu understood that it is necessary as soon as possible to shut up this idiot, otherwise very unpleasant rumors. Shu asked if the guy wants to know his secret, and the guy seemed to only dream of such a thing. Shu proposed to solve everything with a dispute. If the senior dodge his metal ball, then Shu will tell the secret. But if not, the senior will have to forget about this case. The elder appreciated the hero's idea, and agreed to the bet. Shu prepared for his crowning throw. It turns out that the senior had a prohibitive speed and super reaction. As the senior said that his reaction speed of about one millisecond, he was sure to win. At which time the protagonist shouted that they start, then instantly threw a metal ball which at great speed flew past the senior. A moment later, the second ball hit the target, and Shu solemnly announced that the elder had lost. The guy started to complain. He said that Shu had cheated, as he had decided that there should be one ball. Shu explained that they had not agreed on such rules, and that he had thrown half a ball. The older man didn't seem to understand what the guy was talking about, but as soon as he saw what was being thrown at him he realized that when Shu was kneading his hands he had broken a small ball into two pieces and that was how he had managed to outplay his opponent. Although the older man didn't want to, he had to accept it, and he started talking loudly about how he would never bring it up again. Shu was overjoyed, for now both of his hands had the same strength. The older man pointed his finger back and said that Shu had broken the door with his action. A little while later at the test center, Senior brought Shu to the test, and was about to go to check his teeth. Shu was glad that his class was not in demand, because that was the reason why there were no cues in this place. The girl checked the tests of the hero. She said that he has 20 awakened genes, and that he can count on the lowest C rank at most, or if he does not show himself well on the highest D. Also the girl said in confidence that if the guy will show good telepathy skills, he can get the middle C rank. The guy looked at the tests that awaited him and was shocked, but now the hero cared about how to get a high grade without attracting unnecessary attention. She went to the test where two people stood in front of him, 
A little while later they went inside and the guy was surprised. There inside the man was trying very hard to concentrate. He said that he saw a cabbage, at the same time very nervous and tense. The guy's grade was an average D rank since he had only awakened 13 genes. Shu thought that he needed to achieve at least the same result. Then he decided to check what kind of distance he needed to watch to get such a result. SBY saw perfectly at a distance of 2 meters. Shu thought about how he needs to hide his power in order not to attract attention. But suddenly the professor who he was watching looked in his direction. This made Shu Yui nervous, because now things were going very bad. Shu began to pretend as much as possible that he had nothing to do with it. While the inspector drilled him with his gaze, the hero realized that in such a situation he cannot screw up. While the teacher ordered the guy to go to the box and concentrate on it, then describe the object that the hero will see, Shu began to dive into telekinesis, then decided to see what object is the farthest. It turned out that the maximum distance of the hero was 3 meters. It turns out that the result is higher, and he successfully increases the distance of his ability. The guy realized that if he had shown his maximum he would have gotten the highest score, but he could not stand out. He would get into trouble. After the test, the hero decided to show a meter and a half. The teacher read out that Xu received the lowest rank, which is quite satisfied with Xu Ya. But also the man asked the hero to come for a minute. The teacher began to offer the hero to transfer to him, and did it very persistently. Xu could not understand why the teacher is trying to poach him. He showed a completely normal result. Xu apologized to the teacher and explained that he had already decided on the faculty. The teacher began to talk about the panusa that he is ready to give the student, and that for a year he will definitely increase his rank. Senior appeared at a bad time. Such offers are made to the most talented students and he was shocked that the professor offered it to Xu Yu. At that time, the hero seemed to think about this offer. It was an incredibly tempting offer because if the guy's rank is increased, it will not only reduce the burden on his family, but also help him in the future. But also Xu realized that this is telepathy, and he in turn planned to open his other points. Xu thought that his power could become similar to Anne's if he chose the right path. For this reason Xu decided to refuse the professor's offer. While the elder urged him to agree, the professor also said that the hero's teacher should sign the transfer agreement. The senior said that Anne will definitely sign the agreement, and the guy should not slow down. While the professor's face changed dramatically when he heard the girl's name, Xu said that Anne had chosen him before he left, which made the man sweat profusely. The man said that Shu could think about the proposal and give an answer later, but the man seemed incredibly nervous. Shu promised the teacher that he would think about the proposal. Shu asked the elder if he could use his bin throwing power to increase his rank. Shu also said that his ability could be classified as an extreme type, and this type of ability had a much higher grade than the hidden type. The elder asked the hero to just forget about it. Shu didn't listen and asked the elder to take him to the place where these abilities were being tested. They arrived at the test that tested the strength of the palm, and Xu was asked to come over. The guy showed up and said he had arrived. Then he saw a strange notification. It turned out he was flooded with notifications, but he decided to postpone looking at them and go to the test, because he had been waiting in that place for an hour for his turn. One man threw the guy aside, saying that everyone should get out of the way. He grabbed what he had the authority of an E rank, and ordered the others to step aside. Xu didn't understand what was going on here. People didn't argue because the man's rank was higher than theirs. While the man's sycophant started shouting that they were all commoners fighting the man, it turns out that in this world everything is decided by the rank of authority. For example, if a man with less authority will interfere with a man with greater authority, he will be sued and imprisoned. Usually all people have powers of F rank, but to get a rank higher you need to try very hard, because the procedure is not easy. In a university where everyone is F rank, a student with E-rank powers is almost a god. There were two possibilities. Either this man had an influential family or he was very powerful. At that time, he was pushing ordinary students without any hesitation. But Xu didn't understand how he could behave like that. At that time, the man approached Xu and told him to move faster because he had E-rank credentials. Xu said that he would stand in line and do not compromise. This provoked the man and he gave a final warning. Xu asked the teacher how long it would take to get to his turn and she told him that it would be about three or five minutes. The man was very angry. As he was used to the common people bowing down to him, the enemy decided to attack the protagonist, and Xu was not confused and caught the fist of the enemy hand, saying that he is not so easy to intimidate as it seems. It was after these words that Xu broke the arm of his opponent, after which he sat down and began to cry out in pain. He began to call the hero a bastard then swore to destroy him and went into a furious attack attack attacking the guy with his fist.
but Chu was able to easily dodge such a lunge, after which he looked at the weakest point in the body of the bastard, and as charged with all his might on his balls, the enemy fell to hell of pain, it seemed that his dignity has just been broken, even the students watching the battle felt this pain, but the servants of the man were shocked by this outcome of events, they decided to attack the protagonist to avenge their older brother, but the attack of the first enemy was useless, as the hero easily dodged, and then counterattacked with his metal balls, which hit the target on three opponents at the same time, Shu was left languishing on his feet, while four of his enemies were lying on the ground, the other students were shocked by this kind of strength, even the senior was shocked, after all, the guys who were beaten by the hero were ranked at the top of the list, and were the best first year students, Shu rudely asked if these bastards were going to fight, Shu promised that if there was a next time he would aim for their eyes and then their stupid heads, everyone started filming what was going on, and then the internet, as well as life, became a real mess, Shu was completely fucked, because now he got popularity, and so much more, at that time, the man raised from his feet, barely standing on the spot threatened students that they would stop filming, because otherwise he will teach them all a lesson, the enemy said that with his authority he would punish the hero, while the senior explained that although he had seen everything with his own eyes, people from the department would come here now, at that time, Shu said let them come and he would wait for them, Shu said that if the camera was working, he hadn't violated anything, because the university rule said that it was only self-defense, the senior explained that the hero had no injuries while the four students were hurt, so even if Shu's side was on the wrong side, he would still be punished, it turned out that the hero's disobedience to the person who had higher authority than him could cause problems, the senior explained that the most serious punishments could be expulsion and compensation for medical expenses, Shu thanked the senior for telling him so much information, and he was going to wait for the punishment that he would be recognized, the guy decided to read the notices he received. Shu was overjoyed when he read the notices. It turned out that all his merits were credited with points, and just now he had a lot of money, and also had D rank powers, which was an order of magnitude higher than that bastard. The older man walked up to the man and started wiggling in front of him, trying to make amends for the younger man. The man said that he would not create a conflict, only that it should all be explained. The man turned out to have come up with a cunning plan. He said that to forgive the guy had to bow to them for times and that he had to compensate them the sum of 10,000 yuan. He also went to the older man and said that his words were worthless to him. Shu thanked the elder for trying, but also said that he would solve these problems himself. Shu told the bastard to tell the department, but also warned him that he'd be sorry. The man said the hero was crazy and that he would definitely regret the decision. Shu said he wouldn't forgive the bastard and there would be serious consequences. The councilman who arrived said that it was terrible because the guys had no time to take the exams and were already causing trouble. He promised to punish both of them, and then asked them to send everyone to the department and question them. He also ordered to take the surveillance tapes and question the 20 people who had seen the conflict. The man began to say that he had E-rank authority and that Shu had disobeyed his orders and attacked him. After reading the document that the man presented the councilman agreed with the words. He said that this authorized person should not be questioned. The man was already glowing with joy, because he thought that Shu will definitely come to an end. While the hero was very calm, he looked coldly at his enemy and asked if he was sure of his victory. Shu told the teacher that he also had D-rank powers and asked him if he had the same privilege. The man and the teacher were very shocked by this information. The man started shouting in his voice, because even among teachers, not everyone has D-rank authority. Even the teacher could not believe these words, because he had worked for many years but could not get D-rank authority, and then the teacher began to check the information, what if the guy inherited the authority, the teacher confirmed what the guy said, he also said that he could write a written report, the man seemed to be f***ing scared, he couldn't imagine that such a thing could happen, at that time the teacher asked if the man wanted to say that he was crazy too, then the teacher decided to address the students, he told them that he was the deputy director of the discipline department, and he told the students that if they broke the rules the department would come after them day or night. Moments later, the whole gang of bastards were taken away by members of the department. While the senior started writing a post about the incredible feat the freshman had accomplished, the senior thought that Chu had inherited the powers, and the hero said that the senior was an idiot and his father was alive. At that time the evaluator appeared and asked the guys to stop making noise in order to continue the evaluation. After a while the hero began to pass test after test where he showed incredibly high results, as well as the teachers cared a lot about the guy, as they took him as a descendant of the hero. As a result of all the tests, the hero was given the middle TS rank. After that, 
The hero went to the office of registration and payment. The girl said that the guy will have to pay 16,000 yuan a year for training, and 1,000 yuan for materials. As well as thanks to his authority, the hero received a discount of 5%. Behind the back of the hero, students whispered about his incredible feat, and he had already been given the nickname, Soy Superman. The hero was fed up with the words that he is considered a descendant of the late hero, but he is not, and his father is alive. The rebatters kept whispering about the hero, saying that he was too strong for the hidden type. After some time, the registration procedure was successfully completed, and she remembered the advice of teacher and, namely to go to a place, and then call her to open the door. The hero was thinking that he should thank him for the special student enrollment quota, while the girl who worked at the registry was looking back at him with an angry face. At that time, a strange report was being transmitted and that a plan was about to take place. At the same time Xu went to the address and made a phone call, then went inside where the girl apologized that it was so difficult to get here and said that it would be fixed soon. She invited the hero to sit down, and began to tell him the reasons why she had decided to invite him here. Xu seemed to start thinking about something wrong, and looked at the beautiful mentor, a beauty that could be envied by any girl. The girl said that she would sign the transfer of the guy to the class of discernment, while the hero seemed not to listen at all and began to praise the beauty of his mentor. There was a brief pause between them that seemed to last an eternity. The guy realized what he had said and felt embarrassed, but it was really difficult to hold back his thoughts in front of such a beauty. The girl told about the first of three reasons why she called the guy here. It turned out that there was a letter from the city hall, which apologized to the guy and also asked him to give the letter to the hero in his hands. Shu didn't understand the point of apologizing to him. They should have apologized to the injured students first. The second was that Shu would now officially be a trainee, and the girl told him that as a bonus, the hero would receive E-rank capsules every month. Shu seemed to light up when he heard about the benefits. The guy realized that there were only advantages to it. The girl also asked the guy what was the most important thing for a hidden type in the institute. She said that the most important indicator was mental strength and everything depended on it. The girl took out metal balls, which the guy didn't understand. Then the girl made them levitate in such an intricate way that it was hard to believe. The girl said that the ability to use powers correctly gives a huge advantage. The girl began to tell about the method of training, which can help to raise the force, namely the inner vision. It seemed such information is very interested in the hero. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see the continuation of this manhwa, then put a like, that I would realize how many people were interested in watching. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.